Welcome to the Corey Lee Show, where our focus is on building leaders and transforming culture. My name is Corey Lee, and in each episode, I aspire to ignite something on the inside of you that encourages you to grow yourself and to make an impact on the world around you. Welcome to the Corey Lee Show. Welcome back to the Corey Lee Show, guys. This is going to be a good, good episode. I don't know uh, if you scrolled and you just happened upon this particular podcast or how you found this particular podcast, but I just want you to know that if you're looking for some positivity, if you want to listen to some upbeat stuff, me and my guest today, I don't know, um, you got two of the probably the most positive people on the planet. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming, I don't know. But I, I know today's going to be a great conversation, and I uh, want to introduce you guys to uh, a good friend of mine, Joshua. We, I think um, we were talking about where we first met. We know it was some kind of event with the John Maxwell, uh, something to do with the John Maxwell event, but we met at. And, um, you know, when you meet, there are some people that you meet, you just really feel a connection with. And uh, for me, Josh was somebody like that. And I was like, you know what, we we need to stay connected. And I think he, he shared the same thought. And uh, we just kind of stay connected, touch base with one another every now and then and just love what he's doing. Uh, he's making an impact. I love what he, on his LinkedIn profile, I checked it just a few seconds ago before we hopped on. And I love what it says, relationship architect. That's good, good stuff. But one other thing I want to make mention that that he does, I think that is great, and then I'll, I'll hand it over to him, is on Facebook, he's got a Facebook group called Gratitude Chasers, and he just every morning puts out some kind of positive um, video, an encouraging video about gratitude and what we're grateful for, and it's so easy to get caught up in the things of the world that we, we miss that, and so, um, I, Josh, welcome to the Corey Lee Show. Uh-huh. Thanks for being here, Corey. It's it's, uh, it's an honor to be here. I've been looking forward to it. I've followed your podcast and following your journey, your leadership journey. And um, it was, there was a huge disagreement or discussion, not disagreement, discussion about when we did first meet. And uh, I don't think it matters to me. It feels like friendship at first sight. There you go. There you go. I like it. I like it. Well, well, I, I shared a little bit about what you are doing, you and your wife, Karen, making an impact there. But um, take us on the journey. Like, how did you get from where you were to where you are today? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, and, I, and I just love questions, Corey. One of the things that uh, somebody told me years ago, and I've been using it for, for so long, is everything we want in life is on the other side of the right question. We just have to ask enough questions to figure out what that right question is. And so um, I knew from a very beginning, I'm one of seven kids. My mom and dad have seven kids. And yes, uh, we are Christians. Yes, they were Baptist. Yes, that's so everybody asks, are you guys Catholic? You know, all this other stuff. And, um, and so from a very early age, I knew that uh, people was going to be a big part of my story. And I didn't know what that looked like, but I knew I liked being around people. And so from high school, young adult age and on, I just kind of kept connecting with people, whether it was in a career, whether it was at Chick-fil-A or whether it was at my school or at the local neighborhood grocery store, whatever it was, I was connecting with people. And so as my careers advanced from fence installation to Chick-fil-A to married with kids to divorce with kids to, and I'm skipping through a lot and just kind of giving you a quick snapshot of the picture. Um, to remarry with two new kids in a blended family. Um, I've always known the Lord. I'm a man of faith. So being a man of faith, the Lord's got a plan for my life, as Jeremiah 29, 11 says. And so I, I've been really searching the last 15 to 16 years. What does that plan look like? And how do I submit to that plan? And so in that search, in that journey, um, I started connecting with people and trying to find a coach trying to find somebody to help me in my sales career, somebody trying to help me in my personal development career, help me understand what it looks like to be um, a leader or um, what is a leader, all of these things. And John Maxwell's name kept coming back up. I think like five, six different people uh, and uh, Googled it, found out that there was an opening, reached out to a program advisor. And then uh, the last three or four years has been phenomenal for me as far as connecting with people all over the world. Mm connecting people like you. I mean, Paul Lemieux, I'm talking to people all the time now. Every week I talk to somebody from the Maxwell leadership team. 
Um, and so uh, currently right now, my job is a nine to five. I am a IT hardware consultant in sales uh, for a company called STS Education. And then on the, the side or in my nighttime, um, I do consulting training and uh, coaching with the Maxwell Leadership Team. DISCs is part of a DISC. Um, and that's kind of how I've got from here to there in a small nutshell, Corey. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Uh, I, I think it's funny. Um, is there, are, you, are you guys Catholic? Uh, okay, <laughs> uh, that's that's good stuff. Well, hey, I, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you just straight off the bat, right there, is your your group ch- gratitude gratitude chasers, and uh, you know, something like that. There was some thought put into it. There sometimes there's an event that happens or it sparks a thought, an idea is sparked. And I just want to know that like the genesis of that group, like why did you start it? Where'd that come from? It's a great question. Um, so in my search and journey, I've realized that um, there's a lot of negativity mm. out in the world. And then I think there's a study that says it takes five to six positive thoughts to combat one negative thought. And that math just didn't make sense to me. And the way I'm wired is like, I don't know why I just see the glass as always half full, you know? So like, I'm always able to be like, there's more opportunity. There's more of this. And I'm a natural optimist. Somebody says I'm eternal optimist. Um, and so I was like, well, I heard a phrase by a good friend named Jeff Henderson one time that said, use what you have where you are. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, well, I'm connected to people on Facebook and I don't have a lot of time, but I've got five minutes so I can put a video out or a post out. And I started doing that about five or six years ago and it was gaining traction and people were responding, like, keep this going. This is encouraging. I built up relationships and friendships through that interaction. And then I think it was at the height of COVID, like sometime March or April of 2020, where I was like, I, I don't, I don't know what God's going to do, but I have to be obedient. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, what does it look like? And I did put a lot of thought and process and um, I'm an avid note taker, Corey. And so I have uh, notes on my phone and my digital app, my Evernote app of just thoughts, ideas, projects, people's names, stories, just I'm tracking stuff all the time because I travel a lot and talk to a lot of people. And so I said, what would it like if there was a space that every day people could hear something encouraging? Mm-hmm. And no matter what went on in their life, they had a space or a reminder that things can get better or that there's a note. Because you never know what one little phrase or one, hi, how are you? Or, hey, did you think about the problem you're going through this way might do for somebody? Because I know for me, I've had lots of people. We talk about how I got from here to there. I could name hundreds of people, 15 mainly, that have, that have always been at the forefront of my mind, that have helped me stay focused, that have helped bring about clarity, that have brought encouragement. I've lived off of other people's positive and opt- opportunity and encouraging stories. And so then I started adding all this up and thinking, Lord, I don't know what you're going to do, but I've got about 2,000 people on my friends list. I'm just going to invite them to a group and say, if you want to be a part of this, I'm going to post something every day. So for the first three years of the group, every day at specific time was a little message. Simple as that. And it got to like 600, 700 people. And then there's like 730 or 40 people in the group now. And it's shifted a little bit over the last four years. You know, it's not every day, but I can tell you that the stories and the people that I have talked to since joining that group or starting that group have been profound and pivotal in a lot of areas. And so uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I've had a few other people post sporadically and um, so that's kind of how the genesis of gratitude chasers came about. Oh, the name, the name's fun. So I thought like taking the fact and the study of five or six negative thoughts, to combat, I mean, five or six positive thoughts to combat one negative thought, what would it look like if we switched it and we just chased gratitude? Yeah. Come on. I was like, if you just chase it, if enough people chase it, it's contagious in the best way. Yeah. Right. And you think about it, right? Gratitude is contagious. And you think about people who are the most generous people, 99% of the time, they're most happy people. Yeah. There's some connection to being grateful and fill, fulfilled life. Like there's just a connection there. 
So. Man, I like that. And and I love what you're saying too, because, you know, you can go on so, any kind of social media website or site and um, platform. Sorry, come on, uh, get in the game uh, platform and uh, you can see any kind of negativity that that you want. And, and I often say, man, it takes zero talent to call out the problems in culture. It takes zero talent to call out uh, mm-hmm. all the challenges or the dirt in lives of other people. But it takes a leader or, or a champion to really call out the gold or to offer solutions. And and chasing gratitude is one of those solutions. And I, I, I've just, I've been thinking about, uh, well, I love what you said, chasing gratitude, because what I have found is it seems like the majority of the 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 stuff you see on social media is opinions and or negativity. But it's almost like the positive people, uh, they're the silent majority, I think, you know, like they're more Mm. silent and the negativity is just so loud. And I love the fact that you're saying, I'm going to get loud for the right thing. (laughs) I'm going to chase this. You know what I'm saying? And and like, um, I remember, I post on social media as well. I don't like doing it, right? I really don't. I usually get on and get off. But I, for the same thing, I saw all the negativity and um, I felt the Lord said, why don't you just say the opposite? You know, mm. why not just say the opposite, the truth? Why don't you just say the truth, which is opposite of whatever's being said, <laughs> you know? And so I love what you're doing. I just want to honor you on that. And so that's, I appreciate that. And, and if I may, like to add to that, Corey, like I can't tell you and my wife and I talk all the time because there's times where I'm like, all right, I'm just getting off of it. I'm done. I'm getting off. Like it, it's not making a difference or I'm exhausted or it's becoming, oh, this is the challenge for me, Corey. I don't know if anybody else struggles with this. It's becoming more than it's supposed to be. Yeah. For a guy who's wired like me, who enjoys the praise of others, who sometimes seek it out in an incorrect way, right? It can become the thing. And so when I start posting more than I'm paying attention to my kids, or if I start posting and it's becoming a, 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 a strict, rigorous, rigid thing, I have to do this or the rest of my day is off. Like I have to be very careful. And so hold things like this again. This is why gratitude for me, Corey, back to the point of like, why i cannot be grateful for the more that i want until i'm grateful for the already i have mm-hmm. like sitting with that and my wife and i she'll, she'll keep me accountable she goes but you tell me all the time that there's this story or this person said that or this person said that, or i'll get a comment and it's like okay for that one person that's or sometimes i'll post to be honest i'm selfishly posting for myself because i need the reminder to be yeah. great, grateful yeah. do you know what i mean like I'm not perfect. I needed the reminder. I'm a human. I have bad days. So. I like that. Something you said, I think is very, very powerful. You said someone like me who, cha- you know, would like the praise of other people, the awareness of that, like, like <clears throat> lacking the awareness of that. I think a lot of times we, we have these invisible barriers that they were running into is like, man, I want these kind of results. I want to get this. I, I want to pursue this, but, but man, I'm not making any traction. Like I'm, I'm, I feel like there's a lid and it's an invisible lid. And many times it's because we lack the awareness. I love what you said right there. Someone like me, that means you've done something to become aware of your tendencies. And I, I would love to kind of hear that. Like what, what, was it like something like the disc or what brought that awareness to light for you? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So you, you made a comment earlier about like life events can sometimes spur and stir these ideas that you've got to share. And that's kind of what gratitude chasers life event was COVID at some point in time. Right. Yeah. Oh gosh, Corey, that's a good question. When did I really start doing some personal development, personal growth? Um, I want to say it was probably right around the same time, 12 to 13 years ago, um, the church I was involved with at the time had a program <clears throat> called lay counseling and um, where lay counselors who get commissioned by the church to help the congregation in times of need and whatnot. And, um, and I'll be honest, like I don't often sometimes see myself as a leader or somebody who's to be sought after for counsel or thoughts or advice. And um, I was involved in a program at one time and the lady's like, why don't you, um, you, 
you should probably be a lay counselor. It'd be a lot of fun. And now, mind you, the program to be certified it takes two years. Like I'm a single dad at the time, and I'm like, I don't have two years to commit to something. I'm raising three kids. Yeah. There's no flipping way I'm going to be able to do this. Kept saying no, kept saying no. She kept asking. She kept telling me she was praying for me. And I was like, all right. So I sign up. I do this. I commit to Monday night for two years. In that class, the first year, the whole first year is your story. Hmm. And you just relive your story. You go back and you deal with the things in your story that need to be dealt with. You, you seek the help. You go through healing process. There's prayer. There's all kinds of things. That specific class unlocked something in me where I was like, whoa, I'm a mess. <laughs> and like, I need help. And so that was when the start of the journey of like, okay, um, there's a verse. I can't remember where it is in the New Testament, Corey, but it talks about the speck in your eye and the plank in your brother's eye or the speck in your brother's eye and the plank in your eye. And it, when we did part of this discussion, there was, this verse was brought up and the image was shared. When a plank is in your eye, a plank is mighty large. Yeah. And when you move your head and a plank's in your eye, you're hitting people. You're hurting people. That image, I'll never forget. And so that kind of started the conversation of like, hey, and you do these practices. You literally do this practice of like, you take a group of people, I think it's three people, like friends, close acquaintances, maybe work people, and then the people who are closest to you. And you interview and you send questions out to those three groups. You pick five people in each group and you ask them how they see you. Mm -hmm. And then you spend time working through that in this class. So that process was very humbling, very humbling. Um, and kind of, it's kind of built a rhythm in me to really have some checks and balances with the people that are closest to me more often. I think you and I have actually had some of this conversation about like, hey, this is what I'm want to be saying with my life. What are you seeing in my life? Yeah. And then being okay with the answer, like not getting defensive, not correcting it or defending it. And it's like, you know what? I, I love you and I appreciate that. I need to sit with that and process that. Yeah, yeah, that, that is really, really powerful. And um, I, I Oh, I, I know you didn't get offended when you said I'm a mess. I, I kind of chuckled because uh, I wasn't laughing at you because you were a mess. I was like, wow, I think we all, man, what a revelation. I think we all kind of kind of got some stuff we can work on. You know what I mean? And, uh, and I think so powerfully, um, a lot of us don't want to look down, uh, down that road and, and to deal with some of that stuff. But that's really how we improve. And when you said that about the plank sticking out of your eye and you're moving and you're hurting people, it reminded me of this Jim Rohn quote that I shared the other day and because it, it's, it's just fresh on my mind and I want to share it here real quick. So Jim Rohn, he's probably one of my favorite old school motivational guys. Oh, right? so old good. Cool stuff. And, and this is what he said. He said, the greatest gift you can give to someone else is your own personal development. And he said, I used to say, like, this is what I used to say. If you will take care of me, I'll take care of you. Now I say, I will take care of me for you if you will take care of you for me. I'm mm. going to take the plank out of my own eye. I'm, I, I'm going to work on the things that I've got to do so that I'm not knocking you out with this plank. And then I can take care of you by me taking care of myself. Mm. And so, um, man, that's such a such a powerful thing. And one of the reasons I I wanted to I wanted to ask that question, the awareness, uh, man, awareness about my tendencies is so powerful. And you mentioned DISC, you you facilitate DISC, you help teams with DISC, you help um, other other leaders one on one with DISC. And DISC, for those that don't know, it's just a personality assessment profile, and one of the things I've seen people fall into with that is they'll say, well, I'm just a D, you know, I'm, I'm a D that's, that's, that's who I am. And, and, and anything like that is all it is, is to bring awareness of your tendencies mm -hmm. as an I personality. My tendency is to speak in vague generalities or to be impulsive or like you like the praise of other people. When I can recognize that as my tendency, it doesn't mean I have to stay like that. Yeah, I can change. I can change. You don't have to stay a D, right? Or, or 
you know, if I recognize my tendencies. And so anyway, man, I, that was a, that was pretty powerful. I love what you said. Um, Can I talk add to that real quick? Yeah, let's go. Um, brother. Yeah. Go for it. So, so um, I've had this thought stirred in my heart for a while about as you navigate this awareness that you're talking about, like there's a book called boundaries by Dr. Henry cloud and John Townsend. And in the book, it talks a lot about what boundaries are, how to recognize them, especially in relationships. Now there's like 17 iterations of boundaries and relationships, boundaries and kids, boundaries and work, like all these different boundaries. But what I love about this awareness is it creates a boundary identifier. Mm, like yeah. a, an awareness is a freeing tool. Listen to that, right? Like for me, it was so freeing to have a conversation with my kids and be like, that's a me thing, not a you thing. Yeah. Now I can approach this conversation and this relationship in a way that's honoring and valuing versus defensive and critical. And the awareness is it's 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 almost as if you're walking around. Again, there's this phrase, and I, I to cut my thought off because hurt people hurt people mm. and free hearts help free hearts. Ooh, let's go. And so like the awareness you're talking about, like it's hard work on purpose because freedom doesn't come without a cost yeah Ooh. and so when you said it's 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 the it's a hard that like i love that you harped on this because um one of the things i'm learning Corey, and i'm curious about your journey too so like as you're asking me questions i'm thinking of all kinds of questions i want to ask you you know <laughs> i'll um, tell you like i tell my kids hey i'm the question asker here no i'm playing i'm playing go for it <laughs> no um one of the things i'm, I'm learning a lot about is Sitting with things. Yeah. Like in our fast paced culture today, I mean, the thing is, the, the platforms are called Instagram. Like, <laughs> you know, like it's instant gratification. Why is it so hard to sit with our emotions? Mm -hmm. Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying this episode of The Corey Lee Show. Y'all, I am on a mission to build leaders and to transform culture. So if you're looking for a speaker who speaks directly to the heart, a mentor to come alongside you and your team, or if you're in a position where you're looking for a personal coach who embraces where you are and also believes in who you could become, then I would be honored to walk this path with you. Simply reach out to me on my email at Corey at Corey Lee Leadership. Dot com. Look, let's make your vision a reality. Contact me and together we'll navigate the path from aspiration to achievement. Your transformation, it starts now. I remember um, we just finished a session. One of the things in my process of growing and healing is I joined a couple groups. One of the groups I joined was called Iron Man and it's called Iron Man. It's a group that meets on Monday nights and Thursday mornings. And it's a group of guys that spend six to eight weeks at a time sitting with sessions. There's a leader, there's table facilitation, there's all kinds of cool things. But one of the things they talked about recently was emotions. And one of the, the phrases was shared was um, Dallas Willard said, um, emotions are great friends, but terrible masters. Hmm. And so our emotions are supposed to be indicators. Yeah. Why do we have a hard time sitting with them? I don't want to feel that. Again, my first marriage, I don't want to feel anything but joy. And so I avoided all conflict and tension. Yeah. Wow. Therefore, there wasn't a lot of growth. There's not a lot of growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I, I love that. And uh, sitting with that, I've got a friend in South Mississippi. He's actually part of the Maxwell organization. I met him through Maxwell as well. We've become good friends. But he, he says, percolate. You got to let it percolate, Joshua. Oh. That's yeah, a good like, word. <laughs> That's a Southern Mississippi word right there. <laughs> for them. Yeah, percolate. Um, you, you know, the power of that is, is really profound. And it, what I hear even through our conversation is the importance of awareness. Like emotions are not a bad thing. Um, sadness, madness, gladness, all of it's not a bad thing. Um but but understanding why am I mad? Why am I sad? Why am I glad? I think is is important. Uh, I may have shared this on this podcast. I'm not sure. But a couple of years ago, I had a had somebody I really respected. She said, "Hey, I want you to meet another coach in the area. This coach is is another coach." And I was like, "Man, I don't want to meet this person. I have no desire to meet this person. I ain't got time to meet with this person." You know, that's what that's what I wanted to say. And um, 
and she kept harping on me, kind of like what you, you had said, somebody harping on you. And I, because I respect her, I finally went and did this. And um, as I, as I met with this lady, it was a good interaction, but I left and Josh, I was mad. I was mad at this lady. I was mad at this lady. And I remember, like, why am I so mad? Why do hmm. I not like her? And, and I was sitting on that, right? I wasn't, I wasn't trying to feed fuel to the fire of me being mad, but I was like, why am I mad? Because this lady was nothing but kind. She, she was super nice. Like she did nothing to make me mad, but why am I mad? And so Ooh. I asked the Lord, I was like, why am I so mad? And he, he reminded me of one of, for me, Josh, one of the things that I have is um, I've never thought I was very smart. And so when I get Ooh. around intelligent people, I, I get, um, um, oh, what's the word? I, anyway, I, I tend to freeze up or I get intimidated. I get intimidated by highly intelligent. Mm. And so I was intimidated by her intelligence because I could perceive she was really intelligent. She was using some words I didn't know anything about. <laughs> not, not virtually. Yeah, she went, oh yeah, that's right. And so I was mad. And um, when the Lord reminded me, you feel, you, you feel intimidated by her intelligence and you think that, you think she could serve your clients better than you could. Mm. And he said, but I want to ask you a question. Do you want to rely on the wisdom of man to serve your clients? Or do you want to rely on my wisdom to serve your clients? Like what he's saying is, do you want to become more intelligent and rely on your intellect to serve people? Or do you want to rely on my, my wisdom? He's like, you know what? I'm going to rely on you. I'm good. <laughs> but, but I would have never discovered that if I hadn't sat with the, the emotion, like you said. And so, yeah, it's, that's a powerful thing. Yeah. Again, it's the freeing tool. Like, but we're not taught this as children or young adults, like, yeah. cause everybody's in their little tunnel and their little zones and parents have so many things going on. So like, I don't know if this is where we were going with this conversation, but Corey, think about this for a minute. He's got our water. And we talking, John. You I know. know. We're talking. That's so good. I just hope that people are hearing it, man, because there's so much in this. And I, if anything, I'm getting filled up and encouraged by this conversation. And and like, think about it for a second. The family dynamic. Hmm. You talk about like, like the things like <laughs> somebody told uh, a spiritual mentor told my wife years ago that the first 40 years of your life, if you get to live after 40, you're, you're screwing your life up the first four years. So I've got one more time. year. I've got one more year. Sweet. It's the almost going to be good. <laughs> the next 40 years, you're spending repairing it and figuring out what you did wrong and making up for all your things you did wrong. And it's like, think about it for a second. Think about our education system. Think about our culture, our laws, our legislation, all of these things. And it's like, are we really talking about and setting up our young people for what it really means to be who they're meant to be. Like, no, we're setting them up to say, think about what you want. It's all about what you want. You'll be whatever you want to be. And it's like, one of the, I got five kids, Corey, and we talk about this all the time. And the thing I tell my kids all the time, get good at talking and relating to people. Oh, mm. Everything you do in life revolves around that. Everything. Just get good about talking and relating with people. And then you can learn a skill. You can go to school to get smarter about something, but if you can't relate to people, it ain't going to matter. I agree. Hey, let me ask you something. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you this, all right? You and I, I team. Love your, I, love, I love your question, okay. man. Come on. What, what about that person? We're going to go the negative route, right? Like uh, that person's like, man, this, a this AI stuff, man, it's going to take everybody's job. There ain't going to be no people. There will be no need for people with what you just said right there, knowing and how to communicate and connect and relate to people. Number one school. What about those people who say, well, that's not going to be necessary because we're going to have AI. You got any thoughts for that? Interesting. A lot of my, uh, a lot of my conversations with my customers and leadership is, is about around. There's a part of it, if not every day with AI. Um, I will tell you, do not run for it. Do not run from it. Like, um, learn to understand its uses. Uh, and I'm still learning to understand how to implement some of the solutions that AI can provide. If it's a time saver, if it's an efficiency tool, then yes, I want to be a part of it. Um, you will never get rid of. Now, listen, um, let's talk about um, other things. Like AI is just the next 
thing. Yeah. Right. Like there's already been advances in technology. Like doctors aren't doing surgeries the same way they did in the 1900s. Like there are tools that are doing surgeries for doctors that they don't have to do anymore because there's tools advanced for them now and it's saving more lives. And so I think that there's a double-edged sword with AI, just like the internet, just like a gun, just like all these other things. It's a tool to be used for the benefit and efficiency for all. The question is, is is it going to erase jobs? Most likely, yes, it's going to erase some jobs. It's not a bad thing. That just means we, as a culture, as Tim Elmore says, we have to adapt. Yeah, yeah. So it's not something to be feared. Like, learn to understand your role with it, your relationship with it, and then adapt however you need to adapt. If you don't want to use AI, do you remember, like, this <laughs> when smartphones came out and, like, our grandparents were like, I don't need a smartphone. I got my phone on the wall or my flip phone. And now my grandparents or grandparents have smartphones. They use the smallest percentage of the smartphone. But... They have one. They've yeah. adapted. Yeah. That's totally. my thought. No, I, I, I totally agree. And I like what you said. Don't run uh, from it. And I think even in that, at the end of the day, the skill you're teaching your kids is going to be required no matter what. And that's the ability to communicate and relate with other people. And uh, when it, when the number one skills, totally agree with that. And so, um, Josh, uh, did you do a video today? No. Um, I did. I did post a video today. Can, can, can you can you share some of the content from that? So um, today's was on Psalms 37, 3, I think, if I remember correctly. So one of the things in Psalms 37, 3 says, uh, trust in the Lord and do good. Um, dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. And so this verse has been a, um, a rock for me over the last few weeks and I've sent it to a few people um, and shared some thoughts and we've had some good conversations. And so I was thinking about what the Lord wanted to share. And when this verse came up, you think about it, trust in the Lord. Like there's a component of trusting, like we're all trusting in someone or something. It's just how aware are we of what we're trusting in? And then, and when I put my trust in the Lord, what else is happening? And it's like, Oh yeah, do good. Like, that's such an easy thing to do, but we all got get caught up on. Doesn't say do perfect. Doesn't say do without any flaws. Do good. And when I hear that word good, the word good, I think about the benefit of all. Mm -hmm. Like, what's good for all may not be good for me. And so how do you move towards that? So this is what this verse does for me. And there's a couple, befriend faithfulness, um, dwell on the land. I think there's some reality of like, um, I can't remember who said it. Uh, Pat Goodman says it a lot. Good mentor friend of mine says, uh, you might as well be used to God where you are because you're of no use to God where you are not. <laughs> and so for me, it's like, I have a job. So how do I be good, do good, dwell in the land, do my job, responsibilities where I am? Mm-hmm. Do I want to be somewhere else? Maybe, but I'm not there right now. So yeah. I'm right here. So how do I dwell in the land and do good? And then finally finish it out with befriend faithfulness. Mm. Like you think about our culture and our society, this divorce rate, like cheating on your taxes, like people who are like just unfaithful and loyalty is not a prime, prime value anymore. And it's like, well, just you know, defend faithfulness. Mm. And so that's kind of what I talked about this morning in the video. Um, whatever the Lord put on my heart, kind of shared. I like that. I like that. And, uh, you know, when you said that the word dwell in the land really stood out to me as you were, you were recalling that. And, and I like what you said as well. Uh, I think sometimes, especially playmakers, leaders who want to do big things, they're, they're always, we, cause I, I can get caught up in it as well. Looking at other places and the word dwell in the land, grow where you're planted at, take responsibility for the land that you're in. And it reminds me when you said that of Acts 17, Acts 17 talks about that from, from one man, God created all people basically. And he, he set their appointed times. So you, Joshua, me, Corey, we are here in 2024. God could created us a thousand years ago, a thousand years from now. Yet here we are in 2024. It ain't no accident. And, and then it says he he lined out their boundaries of their dwelling. So so the fact that I'm here in North Mississippi in 2024, 
is no accident. Am I going to take up the responsibility or am I going to lay it down by wishing to be somewhere else? And so I love I love what you said right there. Dwell in the land. That's that's powerful. That's good. So so to, to take it a little bit step deeper, um, talk about the depth of our conversations and depth of our understanding. When I say trust in the Lord, when the, when the scripture says trust in the Lord, trust is such a such a truncated ver- verb and word nowadays, especially in the believing community. It's like, oh yeah, Proverbs 3, 5 or 6, trust in the Lord. You just say it haphazard. Yes. Like it's no big deal. But practicality to trusting the Lord, woo, let's talk about that for a second, Corey. Like <laughs> to really say you trust the Lord versus actually trusting. I was running with a friend of mine recently. Um, I've run with a lot of, a lot of people. I, I just, uh, I like to stay active and running and talking to people helps me think about less of the pain I'm on a run. So um, I know you're a runner. So, um, and we were talking about what does it really mean to trust in the Lord? Like with our businesses, with our careers, with our finances, with children, with family and marriage, relationships, friends, everything. What's it really mean? And one of the crux of the definition we came down to after researching the scriptures and talking for about an hour on our run was obedience. It comes down to obedience. Do I really trust if I obey the Lord here, if I put down what I want, if I save money now versus spend, 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 get more credit, financially stability is actual reality. If I give my money away, it actually means that God can do more with what I give than what I keep. Mm-hmm. Like it, there was some real honest, hard conversation. Or here's one, here's one for you. Say you and I do everything right. Whatever right is. That you and I do everything right when it comes to raising our kids. And they decide in their lifetime that they don't want to follow the Lord. Mm. Am I actually okay with that? Mm. As a dad who wants their kids to be with him in eternity, as a dad, as a father who yearns for their kids to know the Lord the way that they're meant to know the Lord, to experience Yahweh, to walk with Jesus, to understand that he's a miraculous father, that anything is outside of his scope. He could do anything above him, ask, ask or imagine. Am I really okay in my lifetime? If they, That's what trusting the Lord really means for me right now. And it's easier said than done because there are times where I'm like, I'm standing my ground and I don't care how hard it is. So like when you talk about this dwell in the land and trust in the Lord and depthness of practicality, it's not easy. Not easy, man. I like that. I heard, I had a conversation with a guy the other day. He said something along what you said that was really profound to me. He said, so Joshua, if, if your preacher, if your pastor came up to you and said, Hey, I want you to fill in Sunday and preach this Sunday. He said, your week would be totally different, right? You'd be sitting with the Lord. You'd, you'd be studying. You'd, you'd be reading your Bible. You'd be like, Lord, what you saying? I, I have nothing. What are you saying? You know? And he said, if, if your pastor asked you to speak and preach on this Sunday, your whole week would look totally different. What if you took that same thought and applied it to your business? He said, "What? What? The point he was trying to make is we tend to separate ministry mm. from what mm. ministry is supposed to look like. Ministry is supposed to look like the preacher preaching on Sunday, and then not seeing our business as ministry." And he's like, "So what if you took that same thought and applied it to your business, Lord? This meeting, you actually said it before we got on." You've been praying about, Lord, what do you want to say in this podcast? You were doing exactly what, what this guy was saying. You know what I mean? But but if I looked at my schedule and was like, Lord, what do you want to do this week through this business? This meeting mm-hmm. that I got with uh, Bob, like, what do you want to do in this meeting? How should I prepare, right? And and to me, when I heard that, I was like, wow, that is really, really good. That's really good. Yeah. So. But see, but see Corey, and that's the tension. That's the tension. Like that type of thinking it doesn't happen by accident so this group of ironman i'm involved in started 40 something uh started the idea of it started 40 something years ago where a mentor challenged this guy pat good and it said look your life is not your own Hmm. who are the men you're going to walk life with for the rest of your life 
And he's like, I don't freaking know. <laughs> and he's like, well, start thinking about that. So this is why I love questions. Yeah. Because questions unearth things in us that are supposed to come out. Mm -hmm. This is why I love coaching. Because there's a component in a coaching session that where you see the aha moment, and then they start to believe it. And for a while, people have to believe. That lady who kept asking me for weeks and months at a time, she saw something in me that I had no idea needed to come out. You have bold as a lion on your shirt. Well, right. cubs, cubs become lion mm. over time. But it's only a process as we lean into it with intentionality. So that question, who are your men? stirred him to start thinking about, I don't know, but the Lord said, do this, so I'm going to do it. So he just kept meeting with guys and it kind of kept going and it kept growing and growing. And so like for, for me, I'm asking the Lord, what assignment do you have for me today? Yeah. And maybe, maybe it's to go and do my business the best way possible. Maybe it's to have a conversation with somebody like Corey Lee and spend 25 minutes praying for each other. Yeah. Maybe it's to walk the neighborhood and connect with a neighbor who's right next door who I never talked to. <laughs> And if I live in this, again, this is a not perfect thing, but if I live in that mentality of like, it's not my life, it changes the way I view people. It changes the way I view my schedule. Like my calendar is insanely packed, but it doesn't mean that I can't be present. It's a lot of freaking work. And my wife will tell you, she's like, hey, don't do it perfect. Like if, if Karen was sitting right here and you were asking these questions of her about Josh, like that would be an interesting conversation. <laughs> maybe we, maybe the next podcast would be that. Be you, Karen and Kim? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, 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 no. We'll leave Kim. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, no. I think that would be yeah, interesting. So. Ask ask her. What do you say about Josh? No, yeah. that, that's really good. Well, Josh, man, uh, you have added yeah. a ton, a ton of value to me. I know you've added a ton of value to our listeners. And so, you know, I, I know if somebody wanted to connect with you or if they wanted to connect, obviously, the Gratitude Chasers, you can follow follow you on uh, Facebook there. But if somebody wanted to reach out to you about maybe coaching or speaking or training for, you know, some of the services that you provide or just want to connect with you, what would be the best way for them to get in touch with you? LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the best way right now. Message me on LinkedIn. Uh, I think my number might even be on there. Uh, but message me. I usually get back within 24 hours. So, Okay. Awesome. And uh, we'll put, uh, I'll write out um, that and have a link in the show notes below. But uh, Josh, man, truly appreciate you coming on the podcast. That added a ton of value today, man. Yeah. It's always good seeing you, my friend. I appreciate the time and the opportunity and uh, keep up the good work, man. God's doing something good. Awesome. Well, thank you. And thank you guys for taking a listen. I know, I know Josh has made an impact on you. And if he has, make sure to put a comment down there and we pass that along to him or reach out to him directly. Make sure you like and subscribe so you can stay up to date. But also one of the one of the ways that you could help us get this message of hope and positivity and, and all that kind of good stuff out is to share it, you know, uh, share it with a friend, family member. And uh, we, we would truly appreciate that. Another way is you can re like, uh, I think um, it helps with the ratings to have some reviews. So hit that five star. I, I hear people say that all the time, you know, hit that five star review. Anyway, it, it truly does help with the rankings and, and ratings. So it gets noticed. Um, I'm not trying to be, be noticed. Josh isn't trying to be noticed, but I think it's the message that we want to get noticed. Uh, the message of positivity. We want to chase gratitude. And we. I love what Josh said in the beginning. He wants to flip that five to one ratio. Right. And that, and that, that's that's what we hope um, to do. And I hope this podcast has done that for you. And so we appreciate you guys. Hope you have an awesome day and God bless. Three, two, one. OK. Thanks for joining me today. I hope I have added value to you. And if you have found value in this episode, let me know. Drop a comment and make sure you share with a friend or family member. See you next episode.